Yeah, Dave Johnson, as promised, Falcon Blues TV joins us. Uh, how are you, Dave? Afternoon, you're okay? Yeah, yeah not right, so yeah. bad. Um, yeah, yeah. I, as I said, seeing the team in, in Everton in the flesh last night, I, I, I mean, I've been seeing them on TV and they do look a different proposition at Goodison. But I was quite shocked, Dave. Um, maybe you weren't. Maybe you've kind of got used to away performances like that. But, yeah, I mean, they were just, they were just off it at your team. I mean, can you put your finger on why? It's just where to start with it anyway, really, from last night. You know, there's been some woeful performances this season, but this one just goes right up there. You know, it, it, it's so difficult to try and find an actual root of the problem because from top to bottom, right the way through the team, we're struggling. Mm. You know, we're struggling with goals. Midfield just seems either erratic or or solid. And then you've got a defence that's leaking goals, like... You know, it's like might as well be on the Titanic, the amount of goals we keep shipping. <laughs> but it's it's just these silly, silly mistakes that we yeah. just keep punishing ourselves with more than anything. You know, it, it's a defense that is just constantly ha- being changed through injury, through, you know, sometimes no fault of our own. You know, you've got the issues with uh, Michael Anko at the moment, um, you know, having to pl- having to play a right back at left back it's square pegs round holes there's so, there's just so much going on with Everton at the moment and it's it's hard to find the exact problem yeah. because it, it is literally just across the pitch I mean you play with that very high line but it's a high line that's pretty easy to breach um, really um, defensively um, uh, Calvert-Lewin is just not match sharp there's still a good player there he's still finding his way back in but that's becoming more and more difficult as the service isn't great but Charleston again was, was off it last night I mean as you said it's, it's in all areas it's quite difficult there is a just a lot wrong at the moment and Frank's going to have to find some answers quickly isn't he yeah I mean with, with Calvert Looney he, he needs games to get back into yeah. fitness and you know does he need going out to the team and maybe getting a couple of under 23s games in mm. in the middle of the week just to get fitness and sharpness Richarlson needs to be playing through the middle rather than on the wing because on the wing he's just he's just isolated he's not mm. he's not putting any kind of ball into you know Calvert Lewin. And then, and then we need to be getting players like Damari Gray back back into fitness and playing him and Gordon either side of maybe Richarlison for the moment. Richarlison's more he's more useful in the middle than he is on the wings because at, at times when you watch him on the wing, you think, well, if the ball's not going to him, he doesn't want to know. Whereas if he's in if he's in the middle, he's at the centre of attention. Give him the ball, you know, it's that kind of stuff. But with Calvert Lewin as well, it's now six games he's been back. Yeah, he's had he, he has been out for a, a, a good long time. But you would think, you know, the six, he's had six games now and the, the sharpness just still isn't there. I mean, last night he still looked ring rusty and very, very flat, mm. really, for the Calvert-Loon that we've all known for, for the last couple of seasons. Just that one shot that sort of flashed across the goal yeah. and Richarlison got, mate, that was it. There was no shots on target, Charles. That's so. it. If you, who, where do you lay the blame, Dave? I've seen a lot of people on Twitter and on social medias um blaming Rafa really not really holding Frank to account and but so I was just wondering where you think you lay the blame I think really my personal opinion I think not getting rid of Benitez at an earlier stage you know and giving him that transfer window that we did you know for you know as I said at the top there we got rid of We've got rid of Luca Dean and had to play a right back at left back now to fill in. Mm-hmm. Whereas we had that Luca Dean in place, and then a week, le- a week later, Benitez was gone. So, you know, he, he was given that extra month. He was given that opportunity to do something in the transfer window. It was time to sign two fullbacks, either not being played or available. And, you know, yeah, I think last night maybe we were a bit naive with, as you're saying, high, playing that high line and a high press because we were just punished every time the ball went, in, went to the wings. Mm with Coleman and, and John Joe Kenny. And, but again, it, the players need to start taking this responsibility as well. And I've said it a couple of times when I've been on the show with you, it's not just down to the manager. Yes, the managers made poor decisions, but there's so many poor decisions on the pitch with the players yeah. that right. they're not, and and you see all the Evertonians go and take some responsibility for it. And yeah. you just, you Week in, week out, it's the same mistakes. It's the same erratic decisions. It's the same poor, just poor performances from players who should Mm. know better. You know, we're probably going to get a rally cry later in the week from one of the players. Mm. We don't want to hear it. You know, these players have paid X amount of money. And even about last night, when there was an accident on the M6, 
There's fans that travel there for hours, stuck in traffic jams, taking time off work to be saved that. You know, spare me the rally cry. Just look at yourselves. Don't worry about the fans. The fans are doing their bit. The fans can't do any more, really. It's all down to the players now to, to pull yeah. it out. I think you make a good point generally. I think f- fans have had enough of that. Sorry, uh, we go again. We no, try yeah, again. Yeah. It didn't quite work out. I think yeah. I think from a PR point of view now, all players are realising it doesn't wash. I mean, it's a nice token gesture, and I'm sure some of it is heartfelt, but a lot of it does feel a bit like, say something like, and uh, I think yeah. that sort of thing is definitely backfiring. Yeah. Uh, Dave, um, good to talk to you. We're out of time. We'll catch up with you soon. We hope for better things. Uh, for you, so yeah, fingers thank, crossed. Thanks yeah, for cheers. joining us. All the best from Falcon Blues yeah. TV, Dave Johnson. Their next games, two next games are at home next week. Uh, Everton are playing Wolves, and they've got Newcastle both yeah, at home. They both, are different both propositions. Good, both good, good, isn't good, though, Paul. Yeah, Wolves gone off to boil a bit, but they'll be looking to bounce back. Yeah. And you know, Newcastle on a decent run, um, so it's not going to be easy. And then they go to Palace, so they have got some tough old games. I thought you'd change the tune a bit during that interview, Paul. There, that you were moaning last week about how Spurs got to take responsibility, got to. You know, you've got to step up a bit, then none of the players are showing up, and here you are after a 5 0 defeat. No, you were like, Charlie, come on, you were what I said earlier on. I've got no idea. Yeah, win the league. I've, I've got no idea whether that was a good performance or not last night. I think we'll find out. A good assignment. Yeah, I think so. Sorry, at uh, Old Trafford uh, on Saturday evening, uh, live on Talk Sport.